Alrighty then, here we go. I figure out what I did with my keys. Another wonderful day here. You can kind of see me. I have developed a bit of an issue, and that is, I think, I have gone up a pant size. I had this issue before, um, earlier this year actually, where several of my pants were not fitting correctly. And at first I was kind of like, you know what, that's fine. I've worn a lot of these pants since high school, so it would probably make sense that they finally stopped fitting or whatever. But then um, I reached a point where like, we were getting new uniforms in at work and the pants, my work pants that I wear for work also weren't fitting, which was odd, but to the same end, like I've worked the same job for six years now and I was 22 when I started. So it makes sense that maybe I'm outgrowing those pants as well, but it still didn't feel great to be like, oh, I'm going up a pant size. So at any rate, um, we ordered the uniforms uh, for work and I, I ordered the size that I always order, 32, 34. And I, uh, they brought the pants in to be tested or fitted or whatever, and they didn't fit. And I was like, okay, well, that's not good. Like, I guess I officially went up a pant size because I can't fit the 32, 34s anymore. Well, then I was doing, you know, just general small talk with people around the office and they all were like, oh no, like it ran, they ran um, big for everybody. Like everyone had to order a size up from what they normally wore. And I was like, okay, cool. So I haven't actually gone up a pant size. I'm just, I'm just having the same issues everybody's having. Well then that same year, I um, bought a pair of bell-bottom jeans for a Halloween costume, which I wound up really liking, and I kind of just wear it around town at random now because I just like the outfit. But at any rate, um, I bought those, 32, 34, just like I bought everything else, and they came in and they didn't fit. And I was like, okay, like, this is strange. Like, this is the third or fourth time I've bought a pair of pants in my normal size and they don't fit. And then, um, well, I was like, you know, these, these pants are shipping from, from overseas. So they have different sizing, um, ratios over there too. And so then again, I did my thing. I bought the pair at 3434 and they came in and they fit just fine. And then I guess just as a precaution in case something wonky had really happened to my pant size, I went ahead and started being more active in the gym. And so I've never been like the super active kind of person, but I like to be proactive in that like if I know I'm going to be upset by the fact that I've gone up a pant size that I can like take the actions to try and correct it. And so I started being active in the gym. And honestly, I kind of forgot about it. And I don't know if like being active in the gym was enough to like slim my waistline down enough to get me back into the pants that I've always been able to wear. But um, whatever the case, I haven't really had an issue fitting into pants here recently at all. And so I was like, okay, well, honestly, I just kind of forgot about the issue entirely. I didn't really think anything of it until this morning when I went to go put on my work pants and I had the same issue I had however many months ago, the first time that sparked this whole issue and I could barely get them things buttoned. And I was like, okay, great. Like, here we go again. And like, I'm gonna either need to go back to what I was doing, hitting the gym, eating right, and try and slimming down that waistline. Or do I just give in to the fact that I'm just gaining weight and getting to be a bigger person and now I get to go up a waist size? I don't know um, if I much care for the idea of settling. That's for sure not ideal. But like to the same end, do I have the kind of commitment required to put in the time 
to consistently keep my waistline where I want it to be? I don't know. Should I even be that concerned about it? I don't know the answer to that either, but I know that it bothers me and I especially don't want to have to like reach out to the people who do the uniforms at work and be like, hey, can I have new uniforms because I am too fat to fit in the ones that I have now? And like obviously I'm not fat and people would laugh at the idea of me saying that. Ha ha ha, it was a joke. I meant that that way. But to the same end, it still doesn't feel good to be going up in waist size or pants size or clothes size. And it's just a big, a bit of an oddity in that it presents the issue of the whole like body dysphoria and what people talk about there and most people associate it primarily with women and I think it's more a severe issue in women than it is in men but I feel like more often than not I'm seeing a lot of people address it with males as well and like I think it's important to acknowledge that it is a thing and it, it, it does exist and it does affect us like ain't nobody like the idea of growing old and plump and doing that whole bit either and like there's also the general idea that I'm like far less active than I've ever been like I never was a particularly active person I can remember um, well I just never played sports when I was in school I don't know where I was going with that I can remember I don't remember anything because I, I never was very active but at any point all of my hobbies have always been indoor sedentary hobbies I write novels for a living I play a lot of video games I dream about creating animations I make videos whatever it is those aren't in inherently active skills and so like getting up and being active has always been a bit of a chore for me and I want to try and find a way to make it fun like I feel like if I could find a way to be active and enjoy it then I probably wouldn't have so much of an issue with it and I'm sure 99% of the world's population probably feel the same way and it's just silly to say that or think that but I mean it kind of is the reality of it the most physically active thing that I've ever really enjoyed was professional wrestling. I always, still to this day, I watch it and I'm fascinated by the things that those athletes can do. And I always wondered, like, if they had a league here locally, whether or not I would be a part of it, and if that might be something that would entice me to become more physically active and more in, in better shape, so to speak. But alas, it doesn't exist. The closest league's like two hours away from here, and that would be a huge commitment to try and do that for the primary idea of being fit. I've always been a performer in some sense of the word, and that is like, in my ideas, like the athletic, the most athletic thing that is performance driven as well. And so that's why I've always been quite partial to that myself. And so that was an avenue that I pursued for a while. It was very short-lived, and now it's mostly just hitting the gym and doing the sit-ups and the crunches and trying to get my stomach to not explode and eating salads more often than not. You know, all the fun stuff that we do to try and watch our figure, which is another thing that's counterintuitive to who I am and who I establish myself as being in that I, I've always wanted to like be aware of my weight and be active enough to keep it from not blowing up, so to speak. But to the same end, golly, look at that traffic. I feel bad for anybody who is coming into town right about now. So at any rate, um, I just never wanted to be that person who just became some overweight, lame shell of themselves. And I'm trying hard to be proactive in the matter and, and not reactive because I feel like once you get to the place where you don't want to be, it's going to be a lot harder to stop being in the place where you don't want to be. And so my goal has always been to try and hit that as best I can. And just, my God, this traffic is nonstop. I don't know if you all can see it or not, and I would lift you up and show it to you, but I'm still kind of nervous about this whole driving and filming thing, so you're just going to have to miss it. But believe you me when I say there is a lot of stop cars um, on the other side of the highway. But going back to our regular scheduled programming or what it is I've chosen to talk to you about today, I have tried to preemptively do the whole um, like trying to prevent myself from 
becoming overweight or just some plump adult person and I always said that I was going to be more physically active and physically active enough to where I don't have to watch where I eat because I'm a pretty big foodie. I like to consider myself capable in the kitchen and I also like to eat food that was well prepared and, and someone took time to make it in the kitchen. So with all that under consideration, like I said, I do consider myself to be a bit of a foodie and so I never wanted to be worried about what I was eating. Like I don't want to have to be like, oh, I'm eating too much today or oh, I, I need to eat less today or whatever. Like I don't want to do that. That's boring. Like if I want to have a chicken Alfredo so salad, solid, chicken Alfredo, it's not even a salad, pasta, I don't know where I was trying to go with that. But if I want chicken Alfredo today, then I'm going to down a whole bowl of that or however much I'm in the mood for. I shouldn't have to regulate myself. And like I regulate my lunches, my lunches are pretty boring, but that's because like I'm at work anyway, work's a boring place and my work life is structured to the point to where it doesn't like invite excitement. And so at any rate, I never really wanted to watch what I eat. I said I was just going to be active enough and I'm now reaching the point where I am not active and I'm not eating particularly poorly, I'm just not eating as well as I maybe could or should. And it's starting to show when I wake up every morning and I can't get my pants buttoned. And that's just like part of the reality of where I live and what I'm dealing with. And how am I going to act in a way that prevents this? And that is the golden question. Like, what am I going to do? And the immediate response is like, oh, every day when I wake up, I'll do some rigorous ab training and slim my stomach down to some insane amount and like I don't even need an insane amount of waistline shrinkage I just need to be able to put my pants on without sucking in my gut and then like after you get your pants on you can feel like the overhang of your gut over your pants and you feel like a 40 year old person and it just doesn't feel good at all and so I just, that is the struggle that I'm facing this morning. And then of course, like I have to change at work. Like I don't, I don't even wear like the clothes that I wear to work at work anymore. So it's not even that big of a deal that I can't fit in my pants, but it still bugs me enough that I'm like, what the hell am I doing wrong here? So that has been weighing on my mind since this morning when I tried to put my pants on and trying to figure out like, what am I going to do about that? Like, it's the end of the year. I, I usually don't work out at this point in time in the year anyway because it's just cold out and I'm eating all the food that makes me feel comfortable in the cold weather. And, you know, it's like the general idea. You put on extra pounds for the um, colder weather so you can stay warm. And I'm not saying that I'm some survivalist who needs to put on extra blubbers so that he can stay warm in the winter, but I do run my house without heat. I have made it through the entire month of October so far. It's now November, end of November, and I've made it almost two months now without turning on my heat, and that feels pretty great. It gets a little chilly at times, like my house will be like 54, and I'm wrapped up in like as many layers as I can muster, and I have a bunch of uh, blankets on too, but what it feels really nice is when I get my electric bill in and my electrical bill was $67.02 this month and I was like you know what I'll take that that is um, worth the sacrifice of being mildly uncomfortable it's not like I am so uncomfortable that I'm miserable and I can't do anything I'm just uncomfortable enough to where I am saving money and it feels good and so that is like not to say that, I, ooh, I'm putting on pounds because I'm too cheap to use my heat, and that's that's the way to do it, is you just do it that way, but no. So I might try and wake up and do some morning routine. I've had morning routines in the past, and not that they're bad or ill-willed or anything. It's just hard to keep any habit, especially when you haven't already built it or established it. And so, and on top of that, it's New Year's, and like this is honestly like the backwards time for starting habits. Everybody's like, this now is the best time to pick up a new habit, and it's like it is, but it isn't because like a lot of people are just hype on just being like, I'll just wait till New Year's to try and do that. I'll just wait till New Year's to try and do that. I'm guilty of that right now. I'm like, oh, I should start working out again so that I can fit in my pants, and I'm like, uh, I'll just wait till New Year's to do that. And it's not a healthy way to be. 
and it certainly doesn't um, help or establish any sort of good life habits to just keep pushing stuff off but like you feel like if you're setting goals for yourself anyway you ought as well just go ahead and wait until when you're setting all the goals and just do all the things all at one time and so we'll see like what happens there what I wind up doing I like I said I intend to try and do some good exercises in the morning wake up hit it strong while I have all my inspiration to hit it strong and then from there um, just try and maintain like I don't need to be very much slimmer than I already am I'm not saying by any means that I feel like I'm fat I would like to get like abs and be a little more like lean or cut or muscular or whatever but I'm by no means am I super uncomfortable with my body or anything like that I'm just wishing that I could put on the pants that I've always worn without trouble or at least not so much trouble that it makes it obvious that I now have a gut and so that is something that is going to be on my radar to fix and hopefully in these coming months I can fix it and I can share with you guys my great progress and how I went about shrinking my waistline and I can fit into my 32, 34 pants again. I need to buy sugar at the store today and I am hoping that I can remember to do that. And I'm getting close to town and I can buy a bag of sugar when I get into town. But I'm thinking if I speak it into an existence that it'll be more likely to happen. So we'll see if I remember to do that or not. Um, but at any rate, just thinking about general life stuff, body dysphoria, and I can only imagine what it have, how it affects other people. And like, I'm honestly kind of fortunate with the genes that I have and the genes that I was given. I know a lot of people that I went to high school with that um, were not so fortunate and have blown up significantly since our better years, so to speak. And I'm very glad that I'm not one of those people. I have a pretty good metabolism rate. I can eat what I want and not have to worry too much about packing away the food. But as you get up there in the years, you gotta help your body a little bit more to burn that stuff off and make it look good for you. So. That's my goal, is to help myself and to try and do some good morning regiments and try and keep the waistline slim. Like I said, this morning was a rather unfortunate discovery when I tried to put my pants on and I was like, this is not happening. And so, and you know what, like, don't let the idea of having to put your pants on bother you. If it doesn't bother you, then move on with your life. If you wake up in the morning and you can't put your pants on and you're like, well darn, this just gives me an excuse to buy new pants. Like, that's a wonderful outlook to have and don't feel bad having that outlook and don't feel like you're doing something horrendously wrong or that, or that the world is against you or whatever. Like, no, like that's, that's awesome. That is very impressive and like, the outlooks that are against society, societal expectations, I call them like anti-outlooks. I have a lot of anti-outlooks myself, and that's what I accredit my successes to, is because I'm able to have these outlooks that are against what um, the society wants us to have. And a lot of those can help you be very successful. And so if you're not affected by your body in such a way that it's like distracting or, or problematic like obviously don't let yourself go to the point where you can't walk anymore but if you're just like hey you know what age happens and you get larger with age and that's just part of life and we should be happy that we aged long enough to not be able to fit in our pants anymore and that's a wonderful thing to be like like if you can have that that ideology then own it and um, 
I can comfortably say that I don't and that I feel the need to put all this effort in and I might put all this effort in only to discover that I still can't fit in my pants and I have to buy new pants regardless and then maybe at that point I'll be able to have that wonderful mindset that so many of you already have but until then I'm going to fight the good fight and I'm going to do all the crunches and look up every ab exercise known to man and see if I can slim down the waistline and honestly like I always go for ab exercises because I want abs but is that really like the right exercise to try and slim down your waistline like are those two things directly correlated I don't know it feels right um pulling into town now and I still have sugar on the mind so it's looking pretty good that I'll remember to buy sugar so I went out and bought all the stuff that I needed to bake these dinner rolls and the only thing I didn't buy was sugar and I have sugar at home but I was like you know what I think I'm low on sugar and you can always use sugar so I ought as well just bag a bag I ought as well just bag a small bag of sugar or maybe it was bag a small buy of sugar I don't know but anyway I'm gonna go and I'm gonna buy sugar today and that will certainly help slim down my huge waistline right because sugar is is what we need to keep ourselves from gaining weight and it is interesting though that this like problem arose earlier this year and it was such a problem so prevalent it affected me that I activated a gym membership which I never do and was actually pretty consistent about going and then um, it apparently wasn't a problem so long that I just kind of forgot about it and abandoned it and then now here we are it's a problem again and so maybe that's what it'll be is it'll just be this on and off fight of mine for my entire life of just oh it's a problem oh it's not a problem oh it's a problem oh it's not a problem I wish that I could just get consistent about the whole fitness thing and and like I said if it were ever something that I could find entertaining then I'm sure I could do wonderful things with it but right now I am just dreading it like the idea of being active is not something that that entertains me in the slightest and I know that sounds awful but it's it's real and I find it to be healthy to be real with myself and so I'm not gonna kid myself I do not like being active so I'm not gonna be active unless I have to be and that concludes our journey I pulled into the store so I remembered to get sugar way to go